All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dream Daddy. Where last we left off, we let our daughter have a little sleepover with the... Sam? Something with an S. I don't know who. But anyway, here we are out and about doing something. Wow. I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Ah, yes. The best way to find your way around... Off that way. I'm hearing things. Let's go... that away. Cool. Okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? Ah, the Jim and Kim's. A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above Tiny Dive Bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sound crack of pool ball sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seats at the bar. What'll it be, boy? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. I say... Are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Jim, Kims, and Neils. I think that name fell off. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. A brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. Oh, hello. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh. Hello. You... You a da- I don't think you're a daddy. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> ah. Good to see some fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. No, no. I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Steve, by the way. Mm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around... balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh. Buy a gal a drink? I think you've had enough. Buy Mary a drink? Don't buy Mary a drink. I don't know you, Mary. I ain't buying you nothing. Uh, maybe some other time. Uh, suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunders off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. <clears throat> Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. Ooh. He sits alone, sipping whiskey, and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? Oh, what kind of, what kind of voice does this man have? I am now that we're winning. I am. Now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. 
I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. Since it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Let's go! Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He mentions, he motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. What was that? Nothing. The name, the name's Robert. Oh, thanks. I'm Steve. Hi. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah? Robert chuckles. <laughs> oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No. That'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. <laughs> It's like, that be Neil over there. Neil just looks over like... <laughs> Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Oh, okay. You a, you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? A beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I love shots. Oh wait, I like shots. I love shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like him. Uh, huh. I, I guess I'll like him. Thank you. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Huh. Here's to here's to your health. <laughs> I'm like getting dangerously close. I'm like <laughs> I'm getting so close to either giving him the southern accent or moving him off to a pirate accent. <laughs> here's to your health. That wasn't pirate at all. That was nowhere. That was nowhere what I was. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. <clears throat> Real smooth, like. <laughs> Wait, I think this is what making friends is. <gasps> Could it be? Am I making a fabled friend? I didn't know they existed in this part of the world. Okay, Steve, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Uh, compliment his cool leather jacket. Compliment his rugged good looks. Compliment his hand tattoo. That's a pretty sick looking tattoo. Or what has be would ye be? What would he be complimented the most on though? I gotta say, man, I love the jacket. I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Eh, my daughter kicked me out of the house, running from my problems. Trying to make friends. I my daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like, not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Mm. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. Mm. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. <laughs> I guess so. Unfortunately, powdering his nose is just code for I'll never see you again. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Oh shit, he came back. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jackets. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way? Ooh, we walking home. Are we holding hands? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. So, 
I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, but it's just a few doors of houses away from mine. We stop, and he turns to me. Mm. I don't kiss and tell, Steve. Oh. So are we doing this, or what? What? Oh. You know. Do you want to come inside, or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Oh! <gasps> He's inviting me in. Uh, lay it on smooth. Smile and nod. No, thank you. Ooh. Ooh. He like... Ooh. Do I? What is he inviting me in for? I mean, I obviously... I, there's... there's. It's not gonna... I don't think it's gonna be that thing of like, Ooh, wait, could it be he's inviting me in for that? And then he's just like, Oh yeah, here's some coffee for you. No, 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 no. This man's too cool for coffee. What could it... Do I... Do I agree? Do I go for it? What do I do? What happens if I lay it on smooth? Well, I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. That sounded smoother in my head. Let's do it. Oh shit, are we really doing this? I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Oh damn, we getting into this. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again, and I can hear him shucking, shucking off his pants, jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest, and suddenly, he's tugging at my belt. What have I done? <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, we already here. <laughs> we already here, right? No. No. Good. Rubber continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Oh, shit. I had some fun last night. Let's go. Sunlight streams in between the slates of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house. Or my new house. Whose house is this? God damn it, I slept breaking entering again. I really gotta get that fixed. Alright. I look for Robert, but find myself alone. Ditched me. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom, and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Was it? I don't know. Uh, you should go. Oh, shit. You just... That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later? Mm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. Oh. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember. Amanda! That dad. Wait, wait, what? I got... I just... I just got an achievement called Bad Dad. How dare they? I I am a wonderful father. How did I don't I don't think so, buddy. I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. That doesn't seem right. Amanda. <sighs> Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Oh man. I was kind of how I was kind of hoping you had gotten kidnapped. I was gonna have to come and rescue you. No, I uh. Made a friend at the bar last night. Ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? Oh, it's Emmas, not an S. I mean, there's an S in there. Not really. That's plural S. Yeah. Uh, they left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Uh, yeah, watch some movies, eat some snacks, stole a car. You know, the usual sleepover stuff. 
You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Oh well, there's hash browns, eggs, and bacon. Sounds delicious. Can I? Aww. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year right here. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or... I've got just the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs off, runs to the fridge, and pulls out a jar of pickles. Oh! Oh, don't... Oh, it's been a while since I just sat down with a jar of pickles and just went munching. Amanda, what? Yeah. A drink of this. Oh, the pickle juice. The pickle juice? Huh? Oh, yep. It's what I used once. I uh, would assume someone would use. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Hmm. Although I've never tried it before and won't try it, obviously. Who raised you? Amanda Ann. Give her a stern, yet resigned side eye. Who raised you? Hmm. Um, you did? Right. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Okay. You got it. This better work. I down a sip of the tart juice. And now, now, a more than that. A way more than that. What? I mean, I assume. Huh. Watch it, you. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some harsh... <laughs> After inhaling some harsh browns... Some hash browns, and drunken... Drunkingly... Drunking... Dunking! Oh my god! Dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk. I'm starting to feel a little better. I'm more of a scrambled guy myself. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Oh well, I gotta get to class. Uh, don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. I love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. We do our secret handshake and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance on my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my own. Head, on, head my own way. God, I can't read. Still a little hungover. <laughs> Teacher's gonna notice immediately. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exits? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Gosh. Gosh. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back, I get back to where that low rent of vague bargained way. I get back to where that low rent Gerard Gerard Way is standing. Gerard Way, I I don't know. Fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly, a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? A sigh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Wow, <laughs> it's right there. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. 
I must say, I'm, you must be Steve. Well, this period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega le leads me in, and I take a seat at one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Ah. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me? Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D.'s Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Um... Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he bow blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Oh. The whole class erupts in laughter. Ah, the classics. Um... All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable unrela narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. I wouldn't be listening either. Oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Eh. Both, you know, budget cuts. Oh. Oh, I, I skipped. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please, call me Hugo. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments, and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd uh, normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It doesn't even cross my mind that something might be wrong. Eh. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved, she fi she's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. We did just move. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Ah. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal. I would appreciate your guiding, your guidance, if she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stop. Thinking for a moment, I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes. They ever catch that rye? Hmm? Dot, dot, dot. Yes. Look at that. They just love me. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Eh? I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seats. And we will discover all that troubles her next time. See y'all later.